So in this example, I have a horizontal box as my pane. And this horizontal box to which I'm going to add a couple buttons. And then on each button, I'm going to be doing my events. Then we're going to take this example to the next level where we're going to do the same thing by using lambda expressions so that you can you learn the lambda expressions and see how they can tremendously reduce your code. Okay, so first let's create the buttons and add them. Uh, let me add some spacing too so that, you know, they're spaced out and, and not running into each other. So we're going to call this pain dot set spacing to 15. So I'm going to create a button here called new. And let me create another button. We're going to call this one exit. Organize your imports. And then, as we learned before in our previous ones, that you can actually add multiple children in one shot by calling the function add all. So we're going to add the BT new and the BT exit. Then we're going to do the old fashioned of anonymous handlers for each one of my buttons. But before I do that, let me show you how it looks like. So you have the two buttons, new and exit. There is one more property let me set so that the buttons are not in the, um, on, the on the corner. And that is in uh, a pane setting. So pane dot set alignment and this is where you can call the position class constant call center so that will allow you to center all your buttons so now instead of being squished in the corner they're now center you can always reduce the <clears throat> height because we do not need so much 100 let me make it 300 by 100 scene so it appears like much smaller So we're going to call this one a multi-button app. Okay, we're going to now add the functionalities to each one of the buttons. So the first button, BT new dot. We used to add set action listener, and we want we used to implement all of that stuff. So instead of doing all of that, we now have a function called set on action. Set on action means when action is performed, call this guy. Okay. New event handler. New event handler. That's uh, Java FX event handler. And this is a very different syntax for you because this follow the concept of generics in Java. Let me explain to you what generics is. Instead of me having to create so many different kind of handlers, what Java did, they created one class called event handler. And you see those uh, um, brackets facing each other, the angular brackets? Those are used to tell Java what kind of event handler you want. And this approach is called generics. In a couple weeks, we'll actually be learning um, how you can create your own generics. But this is a syntax of generics. Instead of you having to have a millions of classes, you can have one class and you can differentiate that one class to have multiple functionalities. Um, how many of you have done C++? No, okay. So in C++, that concept is templates. Java is adopting a lot of the stuff that it inherited 20 years ago. It's adopting now. 
So that idea actually comes from C++ of a template. It just calls it generics. It's also in C Sharp. You might have learned in C Sharp. So it's called action event. Okay. Now, the body of action event, we're going to define what kind of action will be taking place here. So by itself, this code is a little bit less than what you would write in a swing environment, but with Lambda, you can even reduce it further. So there is a function that you override, and the name of the function is handle, which takes an object of action event type. Make sure you uh, pick the action event from the correct package. So make sure you pick everything from JavaFX, even the event handler. It's an interface defined in the JavaFX package. Okay. Now we're going to do a very simple code here by writing system.out.println. Uh, we'll say new button was clicked. Every time somebody click a new button, which are we are just simply throwing an output to the console saying the new button was clicked. So now let's try to run and test the new button. And every time I click on the new button, uh, make sure your console is viewable. And you should be able to see on console in every click that it says new button was clicked. Now I'm going to copy and paste these four lines underneath. And instead of BT new, I'm going to call this one BT exit. And I'll change my message to exit button was clicked. So it's the same code. I just copy pasted and change the message and change the object. But as we run it, <clears throat> as I click new, I click exit so I can differentiate between both clicks.